Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Thursday, June 27th. Another update in the market, so the bounce continues. Um, however, if we examine the bounce, and this is what I've been saying uh, pretty much all week uh, since the market had sold off, uh, we are looking at a dead cat bounce. I'm still labeling this as a dead cat bounce, and I'm not sure or certain that, um, that we're going to go much more higher. Now, I'm looking at certain levels, and I looked at some of the key indicators. And right now they're all pointing to lower prices, and we we can we can get another flush, and then maybe we could just roll back up again. But we're going to take it one one step at a time. I do like uh, further weakness after this bounce is over. Um, I'm going to show you on the charts now and in the indicators, but let's get right into the indicators first, and then we'll go into the charts. Now we have the um, McClellan oscillator. As you know, I'm a big fan um, of this indicator. This is actually a very reliable indicator. Now you can see how we actually bounced um, the last time, a couple weeks ago, and then we rolled back over again. So this is going to be really a critical area, but what's happening is we're staying below the zero line. So anytime we're below a zero line and we really can't get back above it, um, and st we keep hovering around that area, that's the area where we want to keep an eye on. And every time it fails, it tells me that, that we don't have a lot of real buyers in here. Markets rallied because we just had a, a short covering rally for the last few days. So that's something also, that's something that I want you guys to consider, okay? Take a look at the bullish percent SPX. This is, had barely had just gotten, um, uh, re, re, barely just starting to hook up. Now we are oversold in our RSI 14. Um, as you can see here on the SPX, we did bounce, but we're still on a sell signal here. And there's a long way to go before the markets, um, this indicator gives a buy signal to, the, to equities. And even if the market spiked up big today and tomorrow, I think it would just touch this um, eight moving average and then roll again. So right now, this is still on a sell signal. And what I'm not going to show you uh, at this moment, because the week's not over, is the NASI summation index, the NASDAQ summation index, and the New York Stock Exchange summation index are all on sell signals and plenty of room to move lower, okay? So that's the, that is um, a couple of those indicators. The, let's look at the S&P stocks above the 50-day moving average. As you can see, we are below, uh, we're above, I'm sorry, we're above zero, but we are now at these areas where logically that we were for a bounce. And I was calling a bounce uh, several, I think on Monday or Tuesday, we talked about uh, having a bounce here. Um, all, all, um, all of the indicators were looking for a bounce because we were oversold. And we did get that. But let's look at the bigger picture now. As you can see, we are still making lower lows and lower highs, right? Right off the high from here, lower, lower low, lower high, lower high. And as you can see, we're now we're just starting to kind of just kind of peek out a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see if we can break back above this um, 8 EMA again as well. But again, not looking too healthy on this indicator. Now let's take a look at um, the uh, tick. Now this is the end of day. We're, we're continually to stay below the zero line on this tick in this indicator. So this is also telling me that uh, markets internals are weak. And I, I don't see this much more than just um, a dead cat bounce. So um, uh, we're going to keep monitoring it, right? We still got two more days of the week, um, and, and and if you looked at it, there's not, to be honest, there was there was not that much going on as far as a lot of the stocks that were trading. You know, um, you know, you really had to dig deep and look. So I like to be very patient, and I like to sit back and let the setups come and let the trades come. And when you could do that, you're in control. And even though the markets are flying around behind, around you. You're not going to miss anything. There's just nothing um, really. If you can stay in control of what your you know your trading plan is and stick to it, um, you're going to have um, real good success. Okay, now let's take a look at the VIX. Now I had mentioned. Remember, we're outside the band, and then I said, guys, take a you know I, this is going to put a buy signal into equities, and this was the other day. That's why I was calling for that bounce. Now we did get it. Okay, so that's why I'm saying, well, okay, where do we go from here? I think we got a little more upside, um, and we're looking. And I'll give you the levels in the, in the spiders, but I think that. Um, the VIX will probably flag. We closed right here in the VIX on the right on the moving average, the 20-day moving average is a daily chart, and then I think we're going to get probably get one more shot. And maybe we'll overshoot, try to break out the 23, but we're hovering around 19, 20, 21, and we're back below this this um, resistance area. Okay, we broke out, but we came back in again. 
So um, keep an eye on this though. This is a, a good retracement and a healthy retracement for anything, uh, including the VIX. And if we tend to break back up again to the upside, I think that will be a big move in the VIX and that will put pressure on equities, okay? Now, uh, let's take a look at the dollar. And as you can see here, uh, the dollar um, literally took back, I would say what, 75% of this move um, just in a matter of four or five days. So the dollar is also hurting um, commodity related stocks and ETFs, and that's also gonna put pressure on equities. And also we have uh, a lot of the exchanges raising margin requirements for gold. And that's why I mentioned like, hey, a couple weeks back, I said that's gonna put a big hurting in the market, even gold, because anybody that's long gold and is getting hurt is gonna to have to sell good assets to pay for bad. And that's what happens. That's why you never want to keep holding something that's not working. If it's not working, get rid of it. it it's better off. You, you have a clear conscience, clear mind, and you can really concentrate a little bit better. So um, U.S. dollars. So that's big, big, in, interesting fact. And speaking of gold and, uh, and oil, and I was telling you about how I'm, uh, I really like the uh, oil trade. I just want to show you the monthly chart of gold. Gold is now in a bear market. Okay. How long does it last? I have no idea. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a Fibonacci retracement from here to here. And that'll give us the overall picture of where I think gold may be headed. Um, now people are asking me about, oh, you know, should I be buying gold? I think you buy gold somewhere in the 1100 area, mid to um, right around 1150, 1175. And I wouldn't buy all gold, all of your position there because gold can easily start to deteriorate and really fall back into a thousand. Now, does it go back, you know, down to four or 500? I, I don't think so. Um, I still think it's a you know it's a viable asset. In the long term, gold's always a good purchase to buy in a long term account. But if you're looking for a trade, you know three, four, five days out, I don't think you should be buying gold um, at this time. But again, 1150, 1100 area to start nibbling. Even if you wanted to, you know, a break below 1200 real quick and buy start to buy with an average price adding in, then I think I think you can't get hurt. I think you should do well. Uh, but again, I wouldn't be trading it if you're just looking for a short term uh, move. Okay, now let's take a look at the weekly chart of gold. And this is, I've shown you this for a long time now. Remember we said we broke, we pierced this level. I said watch it break the 200 day and sure enough, we flushed, went sideways for five days and now we flushed again. So this week, it's not over, but it's gonna take a big move to, to, make, uh, to take this candle back in the next two days. And uh, gold is trading down again today. So I think you get that one big flush. And what happens is gold is a trending market. A lot of commodities are. And once they trend, they're going to continue to trend uh, just like currency markets. And then until there's a catalyst or it's just extremely oversold and uh, they're looking for a bounce, you know. So I think if you're just looking for a play to bounce type thing, uh, I think it, it's not worth it because gold can continue to go lower for the next, you know, week to a to couple of months. Uh, and then that it's not really the play. So I would stay away from that. But speaking of uh, crude oil, here's the WTI. And I, again, I still love this trade. Um, we are in the symmetrical triangle here again, as you can see, and we are not overbought at the moment. I'm sorry, oversold at the moment, but we're just hovering around this area here. So what I like to see is, um, if, again, above the 200-day moving average, we, we tested it. I like to be at a longer-term uh, play in gold, start nibbling in small um, in USO or whatever interest, you know, whatever vehicle you like, ETF. There's a bunch of them out there and uh, start, start looking to buy oil or start buying some out of the money calls. And this is a great little spot because I think that the way this is holding up, it looks fantastic. Now, what do you see here I wanna show you um, is, let me, uh, let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. Okay, now, what do you see here? Take a look at this spot right up in here. I see an inverted head and shoulders, right? You got the head, left shoulder, and right shoulder. Now, 96, is gonna be critical. That's a big spot there. And as you can see, it broke out of it and then the market sold off. Well, oil's gonna sell off too, right? It's a risk asset. So if we could get break back above it, which I think we are, and you can buy some oil down in here in these areas, and you get a breakout, you're gonna test 105, 106 here. And this is gonna be this is gonna be our, our first upside long-term target. It's gonna be right here, 104, 105. Now that's a great trade if you can grab eight, nine, 10 points out of it. So that's what I'm looking at. Now also, Let's take a look at the BPENR. That's the bullish percent um, oil index, right? So let me just blow this up a little bit. And I just wanna show you, I like to buy, when I look at the bullish percent in any um, sector, 
I like to buy when they're down here in these areas, right? And I like to short up in these areas because eventually, as you can see here, if you look at just just kind of bring your, drag your eye down, you see that's a sell, that's another sell, and here we go again, another sell, right? But um, if you looked here at this pattern, right, and I showed you this pattern here again, it's the same pattern. This is USO now. This is not regular crude oil, West Texas Intermediate. It's the same pattern. Now look, if you can see, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline come right above here. So um, this is what I like, and you can see even you can even see it in um, in the um, in the bullish percent. So I like to see another dip lower back here, maybe testing this area here if we can get back below it, and then um, really start um, buying and accumulating some crude oil. Uh, so that's going to be my longer term trade and gold too. I am looking at gold, mind you. I'm not looking for this. Is not going to be a day trade, okay? All right. So now let's uh, let's get let's get out of the uh, indicators. And let me just uh, get right into the charts here. Okay. A lot of stuff today. All right. Um, here we go. All right. So now we're looking at the spiders, right? And I put a Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high here. And we are now barely at the 38% retracement. Okay. And that's why I say that this rally, all it is a short cut rally. And we have three dojis in a row. Okay, nothing large. Uh, when I like to see if, if what you, I've gotten a lot of calls say, Mark, why? How do you know if it's just a short covering rally or? Well, first of all, obviously the markets were oversold and a lot of shorts are going to cover. That's just common sense. It's typical. Uh, but if you look at it, if it was real good buying, you'd have volume increase. Really, I mean, you'll have big volume bars, and then you'd have large engulfing um, green candles or white body candles, depending on your charting platform. But um, you see them large, good, good sized candles. And here, all we did was, and then you can see that's one is really not much going on, right? Here's a 38%, and we're at the, we're just under the 50 with the, um, with the 20 looking across. But if you take this away, just so I can show you, and this is my assumption on what I think might happen here, right, with the move lower. But look at what's, look at what's happening here. We just have these little small candles. So what's happened really? Most of the move is a gap, gap up. One in the morning, and then it kind of sideways or grind a little higher. Another gap up, sideways grind high. That's why, when you have these violent moves lower, it usually kind of difficult to unless you want to, unless you're holding positions and not day trading. Um, this little retracement move it gets a little boring. But once the move is over and the retracement is over, then it gets really uh, interesting again. Volatility starts to pick up even more. So uh, and, you, and you saw that by the VIX how it just collapsed. Okay, so we're at the 38% retracement, not much of anything. I like to see, this is my area right up in here, and I'm still, still looking for the 162, 163 area right up in here um, to look to get short. And that'll give me right around a 38% retracement. That'll cap that with a 50-day moving average and the 20 coming right on top of that. So I like to see another push higher today, maybe even tomorrow, a slow, slow grind higher, and then we can get aggressively looking to short once we get that confirmation. Remember, once we get confirmation, we don't just short because we're up at these areas. We need a reversal candle on the close, and we take out the previous day low. That's a that's a that's a confirmation. Transportation sector, um, IYT. We have big uh, slanted slanted head and shoulders pattern. Remember, we had that little one over here. Well, this is the bigger one, and as you can see here, all it's doing is giving us a bear flag, looking for um, looking for reversal. Look what happened yesterday. You see the top and tail? Sellers came right in and pushed it down again. Still, still close on the day, but not as, not as, um, not as bullish as I thought or, or, or I would like it to be. Okay, um, IWM's holding up well here, as you can see. But again, under the 20, under the 50. Uh, and we're up on the tra up, upper trend line, but uh, this is, uh, looks like a nice little broadening top here, if you can see. Take that up like a little bit, a little broadening top. And this is uh, not looking too good, especially the IWM's with good gauge of risk. Okay, here is the um, XLF, and again, I see something like a blue, a, a green candle like here, and I would like to see another green candle, another green candle, but we can't even get above the 20. Now, we are above the 50, so the, the banks are looking much better, a stronger sector um, to be looking for. If you're looking really to buy only, um, you could be looking at one of the bank sectors. They're, they're not that bad. Now, here is Apple, and I mentioned Apple. We, we had great calls in this Apple since, since its peak in September, and I mentioned here, um, as you guys know, uh, we follow me. Uh, a lot of guys made some good money in Apple. I just don't trade it. I just uh, I like to just do a little analysis. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll throw a trade in. 
But um, as you can see here, I mentioned, guys, we break the uh, 48. If we break the 440 area, we're going to go to 418. Sure enough, we broke the 430. We went right to the T, 418. And I said, if we break 418, we're going to go to 400. And then we need to reevaluate it. And look what happened. We broke 418. We went below 400. Now we're at 398. Um, and this is why I said do not accumulate Apple up in these areas. When, they, when you see this move higher and they're breaking out, um, that's the first move that usually traps everybody. All of the longs and even the shorts I want at some point. And we roll back down and they, they test it again and then they break. Okay, so this could be setting up a longer term, a longer term pitch, maybe a head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders, right? We have that on the other charts. But I think you're going to get a test here at 284. There's no reason why. Once it breaks lower like this, there is nothing good about this uh, this chart. And I said uh, before, Apple has nothing coming out until the end of the summer. So this is dead money. Unless, again, you're looking to, um, you know, trade it on a short, very, very short term. Keep it on a tight leash. Okay. Um, lastly is going to be the Qs, as you can see. And again, Qs broke out, held the uptrend line here. But... Now, it couldn't even get back above into this downtrend channel, this lower downtrend. So this is also in a big hurting, again, because of Apple, because of the um, because it heavily weighted in this index, okay? Anyway, guys, that's about it. I know it's a little bit long. Sorry about yesterday. I'm having some issues with the computer recognizing um, Apple. As you notice, a couple days, we had no images when you first go into um, the, the beginning part of it. Usually, it captures an image, but I, I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. So I do apologize for yesterday. And um, have a great day today. It's Thursday. You know, keep it light. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we get another retracement. See how it closes. And then um, we can start really probably looking to start shorting the market relatively quick, real soon. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.